Welcome to the math record. Today I'll be covering the ICM State 2013 Division A Algebra 2. Um, also, as I noticed, this is going to be the final video which I'm going to be covering every single question in one setting. And that's due to being that F from starting from 2013 and to 2012, 2011, etc. Basically, the questions are going to actually start becoming uh, a lot harder, and that's due to because of how many trial and error ICTM does in the past. So basically, it's going to take way more than 50 minutes. So to cut down on the time, I'm just going to do only the interesting or challenging questions in parts. Okay, let's get started with the final one. So number one, the graph is this. So let's put is reflected over the horizontal line y equals negative 3, find the y-intercept. So basically, we have to write it in vertex form, so x minus 4 squared. So that's plus 16 to get 13, we have minus 3. So since since we're reflecting over y equals negative 3, and this is negative 3, we just put a negative in front of here. And to get the y-intercept, just plug in 0. So that's now the positive 16 becomes 16, negative 16. So negative 16 plus negative 3 is negative 19. And that's your answer for number 1. Number two, if f of x equals x cubed plus 2x cubed squared minus 3, find the value of x f of negative 7. So basically, this is not even a question. Just have x equals negative 7 and plug it in into your equation, and you should get an answer at negative 248. And that's basically it. So just put it in your calculator. Number three, find the exact distance between the center of the two circles. So the center of this is divided by negative 2 from the linear terms. So 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Uh, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And the center here is negative 5 and 1. So the distance is 3 and 2. So 3 squared plus 2 squared square root. That's square root 13. Okay, so that's number 3. So the first 3 pretty easy. Number 4, if k minus 5i plus x is equal to 7, negative 7 plus 2i, uh, find, and x equals, so x equals negative 10 plus 7i, find k. So po positive 7 and 5, that's negative, that's 2, I mean, that's 2, so that cancels with this 2i. So k minus 10 equals negative 7, so k equals 3, and that's your answer. Okay, number 5. Uh, let m represent a positive integer such that it's between 0 and 91. If n factorial is an integral multiple of 11, find the sum of all possible va distinct values of n. So basically, anything 11 or higher is going to be a multiple. And the reason because 11 factorial, 12 factorial, 13 factorial, etc., all of them have 11 in multiplied by 11. So it's anything from 11 all the way up to 90, and because the upper bound is 91. So find the sum of all these. So do arithmetic sum. 11 plus 90, and then 2, and then the number of terms is just this number minus this number minus uh, plus a 1. So, um, yeah, so, or you could just minus a 1 from the bottom one and then minus. So it will be 10, 90 minus 10 is 80, which is 40 times 101, which is 4,040. And that is your answer for number 5. Number six, let A equals a set of one, two, three, four, five. K, W, P, F are numbers from A, and two of the variables are the same number. How many distinct possibilities exist for the sum? So basically, there's two possible answers, and the reason is because in this competition, the question wasn't really that specific, and um, I guess it wasn't really that specific, and people got confused. So basically, um, how it works is they're looking for either distinct sums or distinct numbers. So um, all you have to do to solve this question, to find the number of distinct possibilities, is that you look for the upper bound and the lower bound. So the lower bound is going to be a 1, 1, 2, 3, right? As small as numbers as possible, and there's a double. And then as bigger number as possible, so 3, 4, 5, 5. That's a larger bound. So they're asking if the numbers are distinct, like, so that would be 3 plus 2 plus 1, that's 6. And then that would be 5 plus 4 plus 3, that is equal to 12. So 6 to 12, there's 7 numbers. So that's one possible answer. Or they're asking if the sums are different. So it will be 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. So that will be equal to your 7. And then 5 plus 5 plus 4 plus 7, which is 17. And now this has 11 numbers. So there's two possible answers based on the interpretation of the question. So, uh, so any one of them is fine. You don't have to put both. So either 7 or 11. 
Number seven, find the uh, value of this. So you could just use log change of base. So log 625, log 8, times log 20, log 25, log 8, log 20, times log 25, over log 5. Okay, cancel out the 25, cancel out the 20, cancel out the 8. So we just have log 625 over log 5. And log 625 is the same thing as log 5 to a 4. Or you could say it's log 5 and then times 4. So you could cancel those out and make 4. And that's your answer for number 7. Number 8. Given the arithmetic sequence negative 10 to 10, Find the sum of all distinct values of k that gives the sequence 0.5k. So basically how the graph looks like, it looks like this, right? Because it's going uh, down. As it goes to infinity, it goes down. So basically, we had to find a value like right here. So basically how we have to think about it is if we plug in k equals 0, that's 1. k equals 1. If k equals 1, that's 0.5, which is still bigger than 0.4. So when k equals 2, that's 0.25, which is less than 0.4. So starting from 2 going to 10 is less than 1. So we have to find the arithmetic sum. We could think as 2 plus 10 over 2. And then how many terms are there? From 2 to 9, there's 9. 2 to 10, there's 9 terms. So the 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 9 times 6, that is 54. OK. Number 9. Uh, points A, B, C, D are vertices of a rectangle. Point E is in the interior of the rectangle. So. Can I draw a picture? Okay. And we have a point inside A, B, C, D. Okay. So we have some, and that is point E. Okay. And they're basically saying A, E is 17, uh, E, C is 31. And D, E, and B, E are integers, so let's call that A, X, and Y. And uh, B, E is, so this uh, length is bigger than this one. And B, C, so this height, is greater, is equal to 4 times D, E, so it's B, 4 times X. And now we have to find the area. So what we could do is basically, um, I'm not sure if this is the exact name, but it's called, I think it's called the British Flag Theorem, which is basically the sum of the squares of the opposite um, diagonals are, the, are equal. So 17 squared plus 31 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And uh, putting this in your calculator, you should get 1,250 plus equals x squared plus y squared. And if, if you make a table, and since x and y are only integers, if you make that table, the only values that you can find for x and y are 535, 1731, because this is 1731, right? So this is the same thing. And then 25 and 25. Okay. So what numbers work for this? Well, basically, if you look at this, we have um, 17 as, the, uh, as our hypotenuse. So our height has to be less than 17. Hypotenuse here is 31, so the hypotenuse here is 31, it's less than 31. So 31 plus 17 is 48. So this height has to be less than 48. Now we plug in x equals 25, that's over 100. So that that's 100, so that doesn't work. You plug in 17, that's 68, that's higher than 48, doesn't work. So these don't work. So the only one works that is 5. So x has to be 5. Based on like logic. So we don't have to like test a bunch of possibilities. So Delete this, this, and this. And now we have 5 here. This is 4x, so that's 20. And this one was the 35. It's 5 and 35. Right? So now how we solve this is that we could split this up like this, like one straight line. And that's a right, like as a height. And we could call this h. So then this could be called 20 minus h, right? Because the entire thing is 20. And we call this a and call this b. And since this is the same length, this is also a and this is also b. So that gives us that 8 squared plus h squared is equal to 5 squared, which is 25. And then we could use this one, which is a squared plus 20 minus h squared, which is just 400 minus 40h plus h squared is equal to 17 squared, which is 289. Now subtract the second one by the first one. So cancel out the a's, cancel out the h's. 
So we have 400 minus 40H. 289 minus 25 is 264. So our H is equal to, using our calculator, 400 minus 264 divided by 40, 17 over 5. Okay, so that is our height. And now from here, we could just calculate our A, because we know A squared plus H squared equals 5. So our A is going to be equal to 5 squared minus 17 divided by 5 squared. And you could you should get the square root of 336 over 25. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for B, because B squared plus H squared equals 31 squared. So B is 31 squared minus 17 divided by 5 squared. And that is the square root of 23736 over 25. Okay. And now A plus B is the base. So A plus B, A plus B in parentheses times the 20, right, should equal to our area. So then we have square root 23736 divided by 25 plus square root 336 divided by 25 times your 20. And you should get an area of 689.6. Okay. And now we're at number 10. Okay, sometime, always, sometimes, or never. In a rhombus whose diagonals are not equal in length, um, the length of the shorter diagonal is equal to the length of one of the sides of this rhombus. Okay, and this is basically just sometimes. And the reason is because imagine we have two equilateral triangles. The smaller side length, it, smaller diagonal is equal to the side length. So that's possible. So now we need to find a time when it's not possible. Well, imagine if you stretch this out a little bit. So it gets a little bit longer, but the other diagonal is still longer than it. Right, so this is a little bit longer than this one. So that tells us that this uh, diagonal is not the same thing as this, but this is longer than this. So it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. So basically, the answer is just sometimes. Okay, so for questions like these, you always want to think about the exceptions. Number 11, an ellipse has a uh, vertice as major axis at 4, 0, negative 4, 0. And its lattice rectum has a length of 1. Find the length of a minor axis. So basically, we have a 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. So the major axis is right here. So the ellipse looks like this and not like this. So basically, now we have x squared over a squared. a squared, since under since this our major axis is on the x, basically our 4 is here. Because they said that the um, value is negative 4 and 4. 4 squared is equal to y I mean, plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. And the lattice rectum is calculated by 2b squared over a. Where a is our major, so it's 4 equals 1. So that means b squared is equal to 2, so b is equal to square root 2. So the value of b is from here to here. So to get the entire uh, length of the minor, just multiply by 2, so 2 square root 2. And that is your answer for number 11. Number 12, if Fibonacci sequence is defined, okay, and then k is from 3 to 14, find the sum of all distinct value of k such that the next term is equal to its, is prime to its previous term. Okay, so we have 0 is 0, 1 is 1, so we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we had to go out to 15, even though this is 14, is because we're looking at the next term. So we're comparing 14 and 15, and that's why we have 15. So adding that, that's 1, that is 2, that is 3, that is 5, that is 8, that is 13, that is 21, that is 34, and that is 55, that is 89, that is 144, and 233, I think, and uh, 377, and 1610. Okay, and basically from these numbers, you're going to have to start from k equals here, 
all the way into here, right? So k equals 3 all the way to 14. And you're going to find out, comparing 3 and 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, right, etc., all the way into 14 to 10, 15. Uh, you're going to find out that all of them are actually prime relative to each other. So basically, you're just going to have to find the sum from 3 to 14. So first term, 3. Last term, 14. Do arithmetic sum. So how many terms are between there? 14 minus 2, that's 12. Cancel it out, that's 6, and that's 17. 6 times uh, 17, that is equal to 102. And that's our answer for number 12. Okay, number 13. If ABC equals coordinates of A is this and coordinates of B is this, is a right triangle with AB is this hypotenuse? So AB, the coordinates, give us our hypotenuse. And its side lengths are integers. If the length of the longer side is k, find the sum of all possible values of k. So we need to find the um, sum of all the possible um, longer side of a triangle, uh, other than the hypotenuse. So basically, you could just go in your calculator and calculate the hypotenuse. So it's square root 16650 minus square root 1850 squared, and then plus uh, square root 3744 minus square root 104 squared. Take the square root, and you should get a hypotenuse that's a length 100. And then from there, basically what we would do is that you could, you know that oh, one of the side length is x, the other one's y. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 100 squared. And then you can say y is equal to square root 100 squared minus um, x squared. And then you could just go in your calculator and make a table or spreadsheet. And then basically plug in a bunch of numbers for x all the way from 1 to 100 to see which ones work. And I usually like to start not from 1, or, but I like to start from like uh, the upper because then the numbers go down faster. So x is 99, 98, 97, 96, 96, and 28 works. So remember, we're looking for the sum of the larger ones. So we have to add a 96 later. So 94, 93, 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 2, 81, 80. Okay, 80 and 60. 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67. Um, actually, we, sh we should have stopped at uh, 670, and the reason is because it's 70 and then 71.4 or something, so for the other length. So once the number gets really close, we could stop because there's not going to be any more possibilities after that. So 96 plus 80 is 176, and that's our answer for number 13. Number 14, a regular pentagon, each diagonal has length 1, the perimeter can be, re can be in this form, and then find the sum of all those coefficients basically. So, so we know that a regular pentagon always have the, um, all these diagonals are the same length, so it's one. Now we cut in half. So a, the angle of a pentagon is 108, so cutting in half is 54. So this is length one, so we cut in half is also one half. So this is 54, that means this is 36 degrees. So. Um, if you know your special uh, right triangles, this is also one of the golden ratio special rights, which is 36, 54. So opposite of the 54 is 2 plus square root 5. Opposite of the 36 is square root 5 plus 2 square root 5 inside. And opposite of the um, 9 degrees, which is the hypotenuse, is 14 plus 6 square root 5. So we need to look for this, which is looking for the side length, S. So S divided by 1 half is equal to um, opposite over 54, which is 2 plus square root 5, over our hypotenuse. So our ratio has to be the same. And that's what we need to solve for. And then we're going to multiply s by 5 to get our perimeter. So, and then delete. OK. So basically, what we're going to do now, we can multiply the side by 1 half. Oops. So we get s is equal to 1 half times 2 plus square root 5 all over square root 
Oh, sorry, I kind of switched the places. The hypotenuse is supposed to be on top. So this is supposed to be on top, and this is supposed to be on the bottom. Sorry about that, because the hypotenuse is on top. So it'll be square root 14 plus 6 square root 5 over 2 plus square root 5. And then to get the perimeter, we just multiply by 5. But we could do that later. So we need to simplify this. So it's negative 2 plus square root 5, negative 2 plus square root 5. So that's negative 4, and that's 5. So this bottom part is just 1. And then you can think about this part as squared and then square root. So inside would be 4 plus the 5 is 9. That's negative 2, negative 4, square root 5. Okay, multiply this and this. So the reason I did that is now we have a radical inside and outside. So now we can multiply the inside radicals. So 9 times uh, 14 is, nine, is 144. Wait. 9 times 14, that's 90. Uh, 36 is 126, I mean. And then uh, 54 and negative 56, so negative 2 squared 5. And then negative 4 and 6, negative 24 times the 5 is negative 120. So we cancel out this to get 6. So this all simplifies to 6, 2 squared 5, square root uh, times the 1 half in the beginning. And now uh, to get this value, you could just think about it. So we have a square root five. So you could think about this as like a a plus square root b squared square root. So if this value is squared, we could just uh, find out what the, it's possible. So if this is square root five. Since it's a negative, we got to put a negative here. So uh, to get f five squared is five. I mean, square root 5 squared is 5. To get a 6, it's something plus 5 equals 6. So this is 1. So this would be 1 plus the 6. 5 is 6. And then 1 times 2 is negative 2 right here. So it works. So this is the um, number. But since you find out that 1 minus square root 5, that's negative. That's not possible. So what you could do is that you could just switch the places to make square root 5 minus 1. And then multiply by 1 half. And then we're going to multiply by 5 to get our uh, perimeter. So square root 5 minus 1. So that's 5 square root 5 minus 5 over 2. So that's our K, our W, our P, and our F. So that is a total of 17. And that's our answer for number 14. Okay, number 15. In a final geometric sequence, the last term is 1458. Its common ratio is negative 3, and the sum is 1094. So, um... Uh, uh, one way you could do this is since the numbers are really, really close, just start doing the common ratio backwards and you just find out it later. So divide by negative 3, negative 486. Divide by negative 3, 162. 54, 54. 18. Negative 6. And then 2. Negative 6. Uh, and then 2. All right, and then basically let's um, let's see how this works. So if we add these together, 1458 minus 486, we get 972. Add that number, 1134, subtract 54, 1080, plus that number, 1098, 1092, 1094. Okay, so our second term is going to be negative 6. Okay, so that is our answer uh, for 15. Number 16. How many distinct points to the graph of x squared plus y squared equals uh, 9103 equals x squared equals for that, for our quadratic? So we have a circle and a quadratic. So our circle and our quadratic goes through the origin, so it goes through like this. So there's only two intersections. So that is our answer. Okay, it's just that simple. You don't even have to solve it. Uh, number 17. In a bridge game with a standard 52 card deck, each of the four uh, persons is dealt 13 cards at random. If Judy is one of those four people, find the probability that she's dealt four spades, four hearts, three diamonds, and two clubs. Okay, and then to four significant figures. So, um, how many, co since it doesn't matter if she gets like a, a like let's say, um, 
a three of hearts first and then a four of hearts second and then a four of hearts first or a three of hearts second. It doesn't matter. We're, th we're working with combinations. So out of the 13 spades, she needs four of them. Out of the 13 cards, she needs four of them. Out of the 13 clubs, she needs three of them. I mean, uh, diamonds, she needs three of them. And out of the 13 clubs, she needs two. And out of the 52 cards, she needs to choose 13 of them. And now you can plug this in your calculator and your answer should come out as 0 0.01796. Okay, so you're multiplying these because each of these possibilities have each one of these possibilities. Okay. Number 18. If x minus 7 equals 1 half plus 2 fourth plus 3 eighth plus 4 sixteenth, etc., find the value of x. So um, x minus 7. Um, I actually covered this in one of my videos in my whatever class where we're talking about an uh, infinite geometric series with polynomials, polynomials um, of infinite geometric series. Basically how it works is um, we have a summation and a summation. So we have, let's say x is, e x is equal to n and we go to infinity and n equals 1 infinity and this is uh, 1 over 2 to n. So it makes, so this thing will give us our infinite geometric and the other one, will, and this alpha summation will give us our linear. So now we can have x minus 1 and to calculate it, it's always the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio, 1 minus the ratio. So we could calculate the inside first and then work on the outside. Infinity. And inside summation is first term is 1 over 2 to the power of n, because n is the beginning, over 1 minus 1 over 2. So that's 1 half. Divide by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So this is the same thing as saying 2 times the summation of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 to 2 to the power of n. So we could do the same thing again, first term, which is 1 over 2 to the power of 1, uh, which is just 1 half, and then 1 minus the common ratio. And that's equal to 1 half minus 1 half, which is 1. So this can simplify to 1, so it's multiplying by nothing. So x minus 2, x minus five, 7 is 2. So x equals 9. And that is our answer for number 18. Or another way is that you could just spam your calculator with this pattern, and you could approximate it as 2. Number 19, instead of single digit integers, uh, the geometric mean is 6. Find k plus w. Okay. So geometric is just the uh, fourth root, because there's four of them. Three times six times k times w equals six. So that tells us that we need three times six times w is equals six times six times six times six. Right, so we already have a six. Take out the three, that's a two. So two times six is 12, and it's only single digits. So split this to a three and a two. So 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So it's a 9 and an 8. So 9 plus 8 is 17. And that's our answer for number nine, 19, I mean. Okay, number 20. In the diagram, not necessarily drawn to scale, we have this. So basically, we have a line, point. And they said that this is 1 half x plus 2. And ADC is 42.56, and this is 72.02, and 12.1, and x5. So what we need to do first is we need to find the slope of these two graphs, and then we need to find um, the intersection at this point, and then from there we need to from to get from that intersection we need to find that x value. And then from there, we can find the distance, which is what they're looking for. Find the distance between A and B, right? Find this distance. So that is uh, what we're going to be doing. So basically, how do we find the slope of this? Well, what we're going to do is imagine we have a general equation, which is y equals mx plus b, right? As an equation for this or this, it doesn't really matter because we're going to do both anyways. So what we could do is that we could work with vectors. So basically what this tells us uh, is um, this line is vector 2, 1, 2, comma 1. And how I know this is that it's the change in x and the change in y. Change in x is 2, change in y is 1. So that's what it gives us. 
And now for this one, we would say it's the change in, it's the same thing as m over 1, so change is 1 and change is m. Okay, so why do we need to know this? Well, basically, we could find our m, which is our slope, and then we could do that for also this, for a general equation. And there's a really good formula, which is the cosine of the angle between the two lines, cosine of theta, which is the angle, is equal to the dot product of the dot product of those two lines, of those two vectors, divided by the magnitude of the first vector divided by the magnitude of the second vector. So what we could do is basically we could have cosine of theta is equal to um, the dot product. So the dot product, you just multiply the same things together. So 2 times the 1 is 2. And the 1 times the m is m. Okay, So you multiply the x with the x and the y with the y. And then the magnitude of 2 and 1 of 2 comma 1 is 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is 5, and then square root 5. And then magnitude of 1m is 1 squared plus m squared, square root that, so times 1 plus m squared. Okay, so we have this. So let's delete this diagram, because we need room to do some math. So then we can move this to the other side and then square it, so then that will be 5 times cosine squared theta times 1 plus m squared is equal to m plus 2. I've switched the places for this, it's the same thing, squared. So this would be, f so then in front of our m squared term, our m term and our constant term, so our quadratic linear and constant, we have a 5 cosine squared theta minus a 1. If you expand this out, this m squared plus um, 4m plus 4. And then in front of our linear term, we just have this, which is negative 4 because we need to move all this to this side, so it becomes negative. And then, and then a negative 4 here, but there's also a constant term right here, multiplied by this. Oh, sorry, multiplied by this. So we have 5 cosine squared theta minus 4. So then we would use, use the quadratic formula because this is a, b, and c, right? So basically we just had negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a to give us our value of m. So how do we know it's plus or minus? If the slope is going up, this is plus. If the slope is going down, it's minus, right? It makes sense because you want to have a higher slope, right? If you want this to be bigger, you have to have positive. And if you want the slope to be lower, this would be negative. So if you're looking from slope a, for, from line AD, the slope has to be positive, so it's a plus. If a slope has to be from BD, it's going down, right? It's negative, so you have to minus. Okay, makes sense. So now all we have to do is just plug this all in our equation. So for our theta. So what we could do, let's move this away because we don't need that. We just need to plug in these points. So let's work with the first equation, line AD. So AD our theta is equal to um, 42.56 degrees. So plug it into your calculator using negative b plus b squ square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So I'm going to do it with you guys because it's going to take a while. So negative, oh, sorry, there is no m here because the m is our constant. Sorry about that. So. We have a negative of negative 4, which is positive 4, plus square root six, 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a times c. So our a is 5 cosine 42.56 squared minus 1 times our c, which is 5 times cosine. Oops. Uh, no. 5 times our cosine squared of 42.56 minus a 4. And over 2 times, over 2a, right? So 2 times 5 times cosine 
of 42.56 squared. So this is definitely going to be long, so, but this is uh, one of the shorter ways to do it. So, and you should get a slope uh, m value that's equal to 2.62218, so uh, 807. So I'm just going to write this many sig figs. We need four of them. So I don't want to lose anything because we're going to be approximating. Okay. And then when we work with, um, ang now if we're looking at line BD, right? B, D. Our theta is now equal to 72.02. So now our slope for that, so we'll call the slope 1. So slope, ah, okay, slope 1 and slope 2. Okay, so slope 2 is for BD. And then we just have cosine of 72.02 squared, right? So, and now we have negative B, which is negative 4, negative negative 4, which is 4, minus now because it has a negative slope, right? If you look at the picture, it has negative square root b squared, b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 5 times our cosine squ uh, squared of 72.02 minus um, a 1. And put parentheses around these. And then multiplied by 4ac. I mean, minus 4ac, so our a and then our c is 5 times this minus a 4, all over 2 times our a. Our a is 5 times this number over minus 1. And we should get a slope that's negative 1.016008. Okay. So now, basically, what we could do is um, we need to find the point D, right? We need to find that point of intersection. So, so now we know the slope for A, which is 2.0 which is just m1. I'm not going to write the entire thing. So y equals m1 over x minus the x value, which is 12 plus 1. And then we know y equals 0 0.5 x plus 2. So we set them equal to each other. So 0 0.5 x equals um, m1 times x minus 12 m1 um, plus a well, minus 1, because I'm going to subtract 2 from that side. Okay, so that gives us that 0 0.5 minus m1 times x equals negative 12 m1 minus 1. And then x, we just divide those numbers. So basically, our m1 is already right here, so put in your calculator. So we have 2.6221807 uh, minus 0 0.5. And then we have 12 times 2.6221807 um, plus 1. Divide these two numbers. And you, we should get an x value that is approximately 15.298493. Okay. And our y value, which you could just plug it back into this equation to get. 9.6492469. Okay, so we're just doing a bunch of rounding to see what happens. Okay, so we have this. So we found our point of intersection. And now all we have to do is to use our second slope and our point of intersection to find the value of x. So we have our value of negative uh, 1.016008 
x minus our x value, which is 15.298493, plus our y value is 9.6492469, right? So that is our y. So this is our BD equation. Now, how do we get into what a value of x will make a y value of 5? So we just put 5 and you would get our x. So 5 minus 9.6492469 divide by negative 1.016008 plus a 15.298498. And we should get a value of x that's equal to 19.87449. And now we could um, have 19.87449 minus 12 squared, and that should give us 7.87449 squared plus 5 minus 1, which is 4 squared, and then take the square root of that, and that gives us our distance, which is 8.832, approximately, in four significant figures. And that is our answer for 20. Overall, this year was pretty okay, but there's some questions that just take a long time, like 20. Um, 17 might be difficult if you don't know how to do probability. 14, you need to know basic understanding. I mean, you need to know extended uh, understanding of special right triangles and a um, bunch of, and then like number nine, which is a really weird theorem, but if you know it, it should be fine. And then some other ones, and that's basically it. Well, thanks for watching the final video for the um, ICTM that covers every single question. And I'll see you at the next math record.